Hi, my name is Fred Trotter. I'm the CTO of Kerasite Systems, and I'm here to talk a little bit about um, teaming data sets, which are data sets that reveal how the healthcare system cooperates in order to deliver patient care. Most teaming data sets are based on Medicare, which is a large, the largest uh, single payer in the United States, uh, which is a public program run by uh, CMS uh, alongside Medicaid, which is um, probably the second largest. Uh, so, the basic concept of uh, a teaming data set is something that a lot of people shortcut to be call a referral data set. And technically, it is not uh, uh, a referral data set. There is actually a referral data set that we offer that's called Mr. Pup. And Mr. Pup is a, what's known as an explicit referral data set versus an implicit referral or implied referral data set. So, the difference is, is that when Medicare or another payer requires a bill to be uh, gotten, and most of these uh, teaming data sets are, are generated by mining claims data sets, uh, when you examine those claims, sometimes you are required to list an explicit referrer in, in order to be paid. Uh, you can always list a referrer, but you have to to get paid on certain items like labs and certain imaging and for those types of services, uh, you can rely on uh, the referral field being explicitly filled out in the claim. Uh, Mr. Pup is a data set that reveals how uh, uh, you know, referring NPIs uh, perform inside uh, Medicare. And in fact, that data set will show you, uh, unlike uh, the performing NPI, which is already a public, uh, uh, public utilization file, or PUF file um, that shows how HCPCS codes, procedure codes, are used inside Medicare. Uh, Mr. Pup does essentially the same thing, except it does it from the perspective of the referring provider as opposed to the treating provider in carrier files. Uh, so I'm going to mention Mr. Pup to note that that the most teaming data sets, in fact, the most useful teaming data sets, are not explicit referral uh, data sets. So. Um, an implicit referral data set uh, usually takes the approach of shared patients in time in one way or another. And what that means is that if you have uh, Dr. A here and Dr. B and they share patient X, right, uh, they've both at different times provided services for patient X and patient X is going to be on our timeline here too. Uh, then what we can do is we can fold the graph and take uh, what is a bipartite graph and cut out all of these providers or all the patients and instead link the uh, doctors by the connections they would have with each other and eliminate patients and instead have connections between uh, the doctors. Uh, almost all teaming data sets uh, work in that way where you don't actually have explicit uh, patients listed in the data set, but instead you have uh, the doctors are connected by sharing uh, patients between them. So then there's the question of what specifically do you want to have as your method for determining whether or not this connection should be built. And the simplest way to do that is just in a given year or some other time period, but you know we usually use year, uh, count the number of times that happens. So uh, given two providers, you know, if they've got 15 or 20 different patients that they share, you take out all those patients and instead you put, say, a 15 between them. Which is to say, uh, 15 patients were shared here between A and B. It's the simplest way uh, to do a teaming data set, and that's a very useful approach. Um, the, we have a, uh, um, an offering from Kerasite Labs called uh, Root Graph, or Root NPI Graph, rather. That is that. It just shows shared patients over a given per uh, period of time. Um, now, what's the problem with that? Well, before you understand the problem with that data set or how that's limited, you have to understand the difference between a directed data set and an undirected data set. So the simplest analogy is, and, uh, and I'm doing this uh, video with um, 
uh, our, our VP of Engineering, Fu. Uh, if Fu and I are friends on Facebook, we either are friends or we are not friends. Uh, Facebook is a undirected relationship. So here's Fred. And here's Fu. And you either have the connection or you don't have the connection. Right? Those are the only two possible states that, between two nodes. On Twitter, uh, it's different, right? On Twitter, you have my Twitter account and Foo's Twitter account. Foo's really not a Twitter person, so this, this analogy doesn't work that well. But let's say he was, for the sake of argument. Both of us get to make a choice. I can follow Foo, and Foo can follow me, uh, or just one of those relationships. This is called a directed graph. Uh, now, I'd like to point out at this point that the difference between a directed graph and explicit versus implied is an important one. There are a lot of people who get confused, including us many times when we're talking. It's very easy to think, oh, a directed means that, uh, uh, let's pretend again that Fred and Fu, instead of being on Twitter now, uh, we're healthcare providers and we're sending patients back and forth, right? It's easy to think, well, directed means that Fred is explicitly sending patients to Foo, or Foo is explicitly sending patients not. And, and the reason that's important is that when you talk about shared patients in time, um, what you're getting is an undirected graph. And, um, and that means that let's now erase Fred and Foo, and let's use for these examples a primary care doctor and a cardiologist. Well, a primary care physician will send patients to a cardiologist explicitly, which is to say, he'll say, you need a consult from this cardiologist, my cardiologist is John Smith, and then uh, the patient goes over to see John Smith, and the John Smith might say, you know, hey, I'm concerned about your diabetes, or I'm concerned about, um, you know, the headaches you've been having, and I don't think there are heart-related problems, so I'm going to send you back to your primary care, which means the patient is being explicitly directed between those two relationships. However, when you're talking about a different kind of relationship, for instance, with the emergency medical system, a patient might be connected to the primary care provider in the sense that the primary care provider, uh, the EMS is going to take a patient to the hospital, but the primary care doctor didn't ask the EMS to do that. There was an emergency, something happened, and uh, the emergency medical system had to uh, work on those uh, provider's patients. So they're connected in the sense that they shared patients in time, but there was no explicit referral. Um, so to be clear, uh, directed versus explicit are two different things. So there are a lot of people who looked at the original uh, doc graph version of the uh, data set, and doc graph, the original doc graph was a sliding window algorithm, which I'll get into what that means in a second. But it was a directed data set but not an explicit referral data set. And, and that's really important because you can have these arrows, which is to say, uh, in the data set, if you have Dr. A, comma Dr. B, and then you had a patient count of, say, 500, and then you had B, comma A, comma 200, people would interpret that to mean that A explicitly sent 500 patients to B, and then 200 times B sent patients explicitly back to A. That is not actually how that works. Uh, the sliding algorithm, sliding window algorithm, would create directionality, and there is valid directionality about who was seen first in a sliding window algorithm. But it's a directed data structure, but that doesn't mean it was an explicit referral. So just to be clear, if you want to know about explicit referrals, you want the data set Mr. Pup, which is a which is an explication of the cases in which an explicit referral was marked inside uh, CMS. The limitation on Mr. Pop is that very frequently explicit referrals are not required in medical claims, which means that you're only going to see a subset. But for the subset that you can be certain were explicit claims, Mr. Pop is the answer, which is the first teaming data set that we would recommend if you're interested in explicit referrals. Now, would it be nice to be able to talk intelligently about uh, implicit referrals um, in a way that gave you some idea about who was actually sending directions there? So we came up with the original dot graph algorithm 
in order to try to get some of that directionality so that you could at least to some degree infer uh, what was going on between patients. So the way the sliding window algorithm worked is let's say this is patient X and then this is time, this nice long line. So on this date, uh, this was seen by provider A. Now, let's pretend for the sake of argument that this is patient number 11 that has followed this pattern. And the reason is, is that CMS privacy policies indicate that any number uh, of 10 or fewer, which is to say under 11, um, you, can't, you can't get data out of CMS about that. So CMS has a, a very stringent privacy policy that does a wonderful job of protecting privacy but can make certain data analysis harder. In this case, however, it actually ends up being a good thing because if you if you didn't have a threshold of patients to, that you didn't consider below, almost every uh, physician in a city will eventually see an, at least one patient by the other city. And it doesn't really mean they work together that much. So the threshold for privacy in CMS ends up being a good thing. But let's pretend that our, our patient X is patient number 11, which means this will be the one that breaks threshold in this exact pattern between Dr. A and Dr. B. And then uh, uh, and let me show you how this plays out. So let's say this is January over here, and that's December. Uh, so this is the beginning of the year, and that's the end of the year. Um, you see Dr. A here on, say, January 15th. And then pretty soon after that, you see Dr. B, right? Now what this would mean is that you have a plus 1 on A comma B plus 1, basically, inside the uh, inside the data structure of the original dot graph. Now, if that plus one resulted in, in this, in our pretend example, it does, in the, in the number here being higher than 11, then you get that row out in the data set for the original dot graph data set. So, um, then you have another event here with B. Well, this column right here is the patient count. Uh, the next one over is transaction count. So, here, when you have A, B, B, which you would get as a plus 2 here in that column, uh, which means that in, for two transactions, there is two periods in a sliding window uh, where A and B saw each other. So let's use the 30-day sliding window because that's the easiest thing. Every time you have an event, you start what's known as the sliding window. So from here to 30 days from here, right? Every event with any other provider is going to count in a plus one fashion for A, right? And if B was seen four times or six times or seven times, it doesn't really matter. Uh, that's a plus one for the patient and a, and a plus however many times that B shows up for the transaction count, right? So then we show over here we have another A uh, and another B. Now, this will clock, start the clock ticking uh, for another 30-day window here. Uh, and what this will result in is because we're still talking about just one patient, all that's going to happen here is there's a plus 3 for A to B. Now, the key thing to remember is that it's always working in the other direction, too. So there's another clock that starts ticking here for this B event and one that starts here for this B event uh, that goes even farther, like so. Um, and that's being counted as the other direction. Uh, so that would be, I think, uh, um, let's see, if we can pretend that this A was for both of these Bs, it would be a plus one, and I think a plus two is the right thing to do. Um, right, so you have a, a, an AB, an AB, a BA, and a BA, and another AB here. Uh, excuse me, I have BB written here, actually BBA. Thank you. That's the reason why we have good uh, editing. Thanks. Thanks, good. Okay. So that's great. Now, how is this better than uh, the uh, root MPI graph, which is, again, just patient counts over the entire year? Well, it's better because if you have uh, two providers who are sharing patients over here, and then way down here, you have this patient C, provider C. And really, this is a long time has passed since this uh, uh, encounter series has happened. And then you see provider C. In root graph, you would see a relationship between A and B and C. 
in the sliding window algorithm, depending on how wide your window is, uh, and the largest window we've ever supported was six months, so even in that case, all of that stuff on this side wouldn't reach to C, and you wouldn't see a relationship with A, B, and C. Now that's good because, in general, if you're concerned about an accurate model of how the system is actually working, uh, C is really not actually being involved. There's a new episode of care that's taking place over here. So the sliding window usefully reduces uh, the, uh, the data set to be people who are sharing and teaming on patients somewhat at the same time, which is great. Um, and the other thing, of course, this is the reason why I designed this algorithm, was it was very easy to explain in a Freedom of Information Act request, which is how I created the original uh, uh, .graph data set. There are some problems with it, though. Problems that have become more and more apparent over time, and, and things that uh, uh, the solution to which Foo will get into. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to explain why this is so problematic. So let's imagine, um, let, me just, let me just erase this whole pattern here. And then let's call this, uh, just to change the example to be clear, let's call this patient Z. Uh, and let's also call this, uh, 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 this sequence uh, uh, the 11th patient between, um, and instead of A and B, uh, let's do C and D. Just, just to be clear. C and D, and D and C. So first of all, uh, because it's 11th patient, you know that there's going to be a plus one here in uh, the total number of patients. Uh, but let's imagine that rather than being a primary care and a cardiologist, these are two therapists. Uh, one is a physical therapist and the other one is uh, a psych psychologist, for instance, or it could be two different types of physical therapists, uh, or just someone who's seeing the patient very regularly. And you get this pattern. C, D, C, D, 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 C, C, all very tightly coupled in a very short period of time that both of these providers were seeing the patient alternate very regularly, right? In reality, they're just sharing a single patient over time. But what happens here is that the transaction count, because it's a sliding window transaction count, right? From starting from this first C, there's one, two, three, four, five different Ds that count. So that's plus five just from this one, but then you scoop one over and then, oh look, the same five are still in, so now it's plus 10. And then you go to here and one, two, three, you know, there, so that's 13. That C shares exactly that, that's 16, so forth and so on. So what you can see here is just because they were treating a patient and trading a patient back and forth, back and forth multiple times between them in the same time frame, the transaction count is blossoming. So you see sometimes these huge transaction counts, which were in some cases hundreds of times more numerous than the patient count. Well, the problem with that is that it's, that's not really representative of the, the, the clinical relationship. So you can have a physical therapist and you can have a psychologist and their relationship with the patient is only as intense as the, the uh, cardiologist or something else, but because of the specific way and time that they interacted, you get this blossoming of this number. It's very, and what that does, it means it's very difficult to interpret what this number means. You have to do things like account for the type of provider that C is, and account for the type of provider D is. So if a cardiologist and a, 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 a primary care physician were seeing a patient in this pattern, it would mean something very different than a psychologist and a, um, a, a physical therapist. So that's the problem with this data set. So I think, I hope what I've um, kind of explicated well is uh, the difference between an explicit referral and, a, and an implied referral, which is to say inferred from patient, uh, shared patients of time. I hope I've distinguished between uh, the root graph algorithm, which is just shared patients in time over the course of an entire time period, usually a year, and the sliding window, and I hope I've explicated the problem with the sliding window algorithm with regards to transaction counts. This is a good place for us to stop this video and start the next chapter, which is going to be uh, driven by Foo rather than me. 
and uh, explicate how we're approaching solving this problem.